So back at it in the garage. Um, this is the episode two, part two, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're getting the front cover off the engine. As you can see, I've already started basically dismantling everything. I'm going to try to leave the coolant system alone. I did flush it just in case, but I should be able to sneak that front cover off just enough. Now, once we get that guy off, and obviously the oil pan and everything, and be able to inspect it, you guys throw me in the comments. What do you think is wrong with it? it, it it's either... Uh, bearing right could be a sprung bearing highly unlikely but it could be um did the front o-ring in the front cover did that blow out um is it the oil pump is the failure point um what do you guys think give me your comments what do you guys think is wrong why this is not making sufficient oil pressure um well running uh so love to hear from you guys on that um but we're gonna get to it in this video take the rest of this car apart see what we got and uh, yeah, you guys enjoy this with me. Let's get after it. Looks like we just have the turbo drain, the hardware around, and drop the pan. All the bolts are loose. Just got to pop the RTV and get that front hub off. And this thing should come out. And you guys are going to see this with me. I'm going to take this off. At the same time, you guys can watch. So uh, there's no uh, slide tricks or anything like that. Uh, we're going to see exactly what's behind door number one. So we got all the front cover bolts off. I was able to crack her loose. So the front cover is loose. And upon inspection in here, so I do see the Teflon. And I do see the O-ring here. So the O-ring is also in place. There you go, and now you can get a better look at it. So the O-ring is there. And nothing looks like to be blown out. So let's keep diving in on this guy. Let's get this front cover off. We'll try to see what we can save on a gasket. I don't think we're gonna be able to save this gasket. We're probably gonna have to get a new one. Not the end of the world, um, but. Should be able to get this thing off now. Let's see how I can get this thing out of here. Now this is going to be interesting. Okay, okay, okay. So as I go deeper and deeper in this thing, I am just getting more and more confused. Um, let me grab a flashlight here. So, uh, so here is our front end play, thrust washers, everything looks brand new. Everything's brand new. No issues whatsoever. We'll take those off in a second because we're obviously gonna wanna also check. So you can see right at the top there uh, where that thrust washer is, there's an oil squirter um, for those. So those keep those lubricated. Um, but even going through on, on here, this is never starved of oil, like that's perfectly fine. There's no heat marks, nothing. This was a balanced motor too by Balance Wiz. Oil pressure or oil pump, um, no serious scoring or anything like that inside the oil pump, but maybe it's a low pressure pump. I don't know how they could modify that. That's the same pump that came off the engine previously before. One thing I should share also, um, previously this engine, it did have uh, um, an apex seal chip in the corner, so it wasn't running very well. As well, also I should say, is this engine did have low oil pressure, um, but the pan, the oil pan itself, the reason why I went with the billet on here um, is because this car sits so low, the pan was actually flattened. The regular steel pan was flattened um, and it crushed into the uh, pickup tube which in my opinion, I mean, you could see the indentation of the pickup tube inside of the pan. So that was a clear sign to me that that's probably why it had lower oil pressure upon going through and seeing that the eccentric shaft had uh, aftermarket jets inside of it. I knew that it would reduce oil pressure a little bit, but I didn't think it'd be that, this dramatic, this drastic of an oil pressure difference. Um, so that's interesting to me, uh, what's going on here. But we're gonna take these off. We'll see if all this stuff come out without. Nah, 
I'm gonna have to take out the, uh, I'm, I'll get these. So I'm gonna take all these out and I'm gonna take this stationary gear out as well. Just the front stationary gear, just to inspect it. Just to make sure that there's nothing out of the ordinary with the um, bearing wear on there as to what's already been done. Um, but I am not seeing anything yet as to like uh, uh, what it could be. So I'm still a little, still a little puzzled at this whole deal. Um, the only thing that I can see right now is it's pointing to the east shaft jetting. So I'm gonna keep tearing it apart here as far as I can go. Basically the only thing else that I can do is take out this uh, front stationary gear and then the disassembly is complete at that point. I can't take apart anymore. So, um, but yeah, I will take that out and we will see where we're at. All right, well, um, I'm happy and I'm sad kind of at the same time. Uh, <laughs> sad, uh, just because I've just put in just a ton of work and legitimately found nothing. Um, happy because I've legitimately found nothing. Um, so let's just go through here. Uh, I took out the uh, stationary gear on the front and then we'll look at the front half of the engine um, together here. But I am just uh, beyond words here. Um, so let's just check this out. All right, so this is the front stationary gear. Um, the rear stationary gear is gonna look basically about the same. Um, with that, uh, you've basically set these. There's a pin right here, a screw pin. Um, and then that aligns it basically so that it doesn't move in the hole so it doesn't spin, right? Um, this bearing, uh, if it had any wear whatsoever, it'd be like copper see-through. This is basically like brand new from when I put it in. There's no copper nor, no, or, or uh, abnormal wear or heat marks, heat transfer marks. So this is mint. Like this is phenomenal for how many miles that it's got on it probably you know uh 2,000 miles 1,500 probably more than 1,500 miles I'm gonna say 2,000 miles the owner could probably correct me but um he drove it uh a lot uh basically as a daily driver uh just a break in the motor and then and then some just to have fun with it whatever so bearings mint on that one which is great so don't get me wrong but I'm trying to find the problem so this isn't the culprit, bearings aren't the cul culprit. Um, to further uh, that as to why I know. So in here, and I'll get the light down in here so you can see. Um, let me see if I can get you a little bit better angle. Okay, so then you see in there is the other, that's a rotor in there. So that has a keyway for the bearing as well as the bearing, there's no heat marks or anything like that on the bearing but that bearing is still keyed into the rotor as to what I originally did when I installed it. So the bearing hasn't moved on that rotor either. Um, there's no material, there's nothing in there that would speak otherwise to me. So this basically lets me inspect half of the bearings, otherwise I have to take the transmission off to see the other half. I'm not gonna do that. I mean, there's no point, at, at, at this time, there's no point in me doing that. Um, the oil galleys, everything seems to be okay. I mean, there's nothing that is sticking out to me like, oh yeah, that's what it is. So I'm just having a hard time believing what it is or what um, steps to take. So I gotta think about this for a second. Uh, going through the parts, the only thing that I could think of it being is potentially uh, the oil pump. Um, just is like a lower pressure oil pump. So I'm for sure gonna replace the oil pump. I'm probably gonna get a high pressure uh, regulator for the rear, uh, an aftermarket high performance one. Um, and it does have a thermal bypass, uh, the Atkins thermal pellet in there. And I've used these on tons of applications. I am gonna run this in to the eccentric shaft without anything on there, just so I can inspect to make sure that this is actually blocking that port. Um, but yeah, there's not really a whole lot that I can do to change the oil pressure knowing that the E shaft has larger jetting in it, that might dictate how high I can actually get the pressure um, with it performing the way that I want it to. So yeah, it's a fun one. This is a fun one. 
Um, but we're going to figure this out. So uh, I'm going to get on the horn, um, call a few of my phone of friends, and we're going to chat and see um, what I can do to change this out. So stick with me, guys. All right. So uh, no, I did not take the engine apart and uh, get to the eccentric shaft. I just wanted to use this as demonstration for you guys. Um, because I keep saying eccentric shaft modification, things of that nature, um, for lower oil pressure. And I kind of want everybody to understand <clears throat> what was done and potentially causing the lower oil pressure, no matter what regulator, um, I'm putting in the engine. So, um, first off, so these little oil jets, basically this is an oil jet, which goes right here. Um, and you have oil flowing all the way through this eccentric shaft, right? Um, so it's fed in at the front bearing, runs all the way through, comes out the rear bearing. Each rotor has its own journal on both sides. And then also through the center, uh, if you can imagine, let me grab a rotor real quick. All right, so rotor for demonstration here. So if you imagine this oil jet right here, which is this guy right here, so this would go in that hole, right? So what this jet is doing is cooling this inner face of this rotor. Um, and it's actually done, uh, pretty uh, easily done, and no real modifications needed in my opinion. Um, this uh, motor that I'm dealing with, uh, currently right now with the issue, um, had this done. So what they do is they take out this little ball bearing. So this guy would go in first, right? So that goes in there and then you have your spring in there and then this goes in. And what happens is, is as this rot uh, rotation mass spinning around, it centrifugally forces this ball bearing against the spring, which does not take much load and it starts oiling the inner surface here. Now what that does is on, let's just say uh, I idle, right? At cold start. Uh, when the motor's not spinning fast, when you're cranking it over, when it's making its crank revolutions, this is staying locked in place inside this passageway to stop oil from squirting out to keep as much pressure inside this E-shaft, right? Pretty ingenious. Once the motor is spinning up and it's getting a lot more RPM, that centrifugal force pushes this ball bearing against the spring bypassing oil around the ball bearing and then jetting it out of here. So in the E-shaft that's in the FD um, uh, time attack car, that has none of these. So these are gone and then it has just a uh, jet that was put inside here um, to basically uh, make it so it's the same size almost as this hole, which is fairly large. I mean, when you look at an oil passage, just constantly flowing out. So that right there brings me to the conclusion for idle, obviously being lower, cold uh, starts, things of that nature being lower by having these removed and not keeping that oil pressure in the engine at idle would automatically just bleed off. Probably that 15, 20 PSI of oil pressure that I'm looking for. I just wanted to bring a little perspective of the E-shaft modification that I keep on referring back to. Um, that's what this is. And that's what can also greatly reduce the oil pressure. While this is also fresh on my mind, I wanted to bring up um, the changes that I'm going to make um, to help remedy the issue. Now, I don't know if it's going to fix it 100% completely, as I'm throwing around ideas, if you put it in perspective of like a fuel system, and I know that, you know, uh, apples and oranges, but it's pressure is pressure, pressure and it's fluid, right? So uh, if you look at um, this oil system on the car that I'm working on right now, uh, it is bleeding off more oil than what I would like it to be. But is that actually true in damaging the engine? Um, survey says no, it's not true. It's not damaging the engine. Uh, the engine is actually, everything's fine. It's perfect. It's running great. Um, which got me to thinking, okay, so why is it running great? And what, uh, um, what is the benefit of running the lower oil pressure? 
So that's where uh, it comes to uh, same as like a fuel pressure, right? So if you were to turn up your fuel pressure regulator and you tighten it all the way down, at some point in time, you're gonna max out your pump, right? So what do you gotta do? You gotta get a bigger pump to make more flow, more uh, pressure on the injectors. It's like you go from a four injector system to a six or an eight, or you, you multiply the injectors of what you're uh, doing to get more fuel in the engine. That's kind of the same thing that's being done on this setup with the oil is it's opening more oil passage but using the same pump. So no matter uh, what we do to try to increase that pressure uh, with the aftermarket regulator and things of that nature, um, the pump is maxed, right? So that wet sump OEM factory pump is only gonna be able to do so much with what we're asking. Now on a dry sump, right, we probably could really manipulate the oil pressure the way that I would like it to be manipulated to feel better, sleep at night, right? So uh, at least getting a fresh start and being able to say, okay, we're gonna get a competition oil pressure regulator so that we know that we have as much adjustment as what we would have on like a uh, wet uh, dry sump rotary. We're gonna have the same on the wet sump, but at some point the oil pump, the factory oil pump is gonna max out and it's gonna say, well, we're giving you as much flow as we got, no matter how much more pressure you put on us, uh, we can't make any more pressure. That's the max of the pump. The pump ain't gonna pump anymore. Everything's getting oil, what more do you want of us? So if it does that with the competition regulator and it just, the, the pump is only spinning so fast, it can only make so much pressure at idle. Um, and then once you rev it, then it builds up the pressure because it's a, it's a ratio, right? It's, it's a chain driven, oil pump so at idle it's only going to make so much oil pressure um, once you rev it up then it gives you more oil so um, if that is what it is great uh, i'll accept it but uh, at this point i gotta at least try and make sure um, everything's set up 100 percent um, this is my reputation got to make sure uh, i stand behind the product that i provide for people and I can do that. So long-winded explanation. Um, hopefully you guys are still watching. Parts are getting installed right now. All right, let's get to the reassembly of what we got for all the new parts um, for this oil system. So as you can see here, this is a competition pressure regulator. The neat part about this is it comes apart uh, from right here, the spring, which is similar to this, and then it has the uh, retainer or the, the little piece here that actually gets pushed in to relieve uh, it's the, the sleeve or the cylinder for the pressure regulator. Um, so that's where the oil comes out. So we have these little shims. They're uh, about a 16th, eighth of an inch thick. So on here with no shim, this should be at about 90 PSI. Um, with uh, one shim is like 110, 115, and then two shims is going to be about 120. So I feel like we're lackluster, about 30 PSI. So we're gonna just go ahead, put two shims inside of here. And then for the front uh, cover, this is in the rear uh, of the engine, So this guy here. Uh, and then in the front cover has these, this spring here. So currently right now, this is the spring that was in there. Um, you can see here, even looking at it, this spring is actually taller. So the FD spring, whether this one was wore out or what, I'm not 100% sure, um, but this spring here is definitely taller than this one uh, that came out of it. So, and I literally can't see on this guy. I'm trying to look to see if I can see any white. That's how you can tell if it's an FD uh, oil pressure regulator spring for the front cover. Um, cannot see any white on it. Maybe this one was not uh, what it needed to be right from the get-go. So this one definitely is the FD REW uh, front cover. Uh, and then we're going to put two shims in there as well. So I got some extra shims just so I had them in case uh, if I decided to go three or whatnot. Um, but I think that that's sufficient. So we're going to do two extra um, shims in the rear, two in the front. That should bump up our oil pressure considerably. 
Um, hopefully, uh, with making these changes, we're gonna see some big improvements, as well as we got the new oil pump. Um, so this oil pump here, uh, I do have to put it together, so I gotta take the actual chain sprocket uh, off the pump for the um, to be able to go on to the new one, and then we should be able to just get all this stuff installed, new front cover gasket. I did go ahead and get a new um, uh, OEM main seal. Uh, just because the other one, I mean, it didn't look bad, but I didn't like the look of it. So I just replaced it um, just so I knew I had all new parts to be able to reassemble the front engine um, that I disassembled. So let's get this thing put together. All right, last look underneath this beast before we put the pan back on. Let's just zoom out a little bit here, but all right. So front cover's all on. We got the... Oil pressure regulator, nice little Atkins rotary pressure regulator. He even says right in the bottom. Kind of matched that up on accident, but oh well. Uh, we got our front oil pressure regulator here in spring. Uh, everything's shimmed too, so we got two shims here, and then we got two shims here. So that should be good, both with the higher output springs for more pressure. We got our new front cover gasket and uh, O-ring as well, just because since we're in there and then we have our brand new oil pump so with all that being said i think that this guy is ready to get an oil pan on her and then let's get to some oil pressure action all right totally filled up with fluids we got the coolant we got the oil time to get this thing hooked up to the laptop fire it up on a cold start see what we got all right, so we got all cold temps. She's actually pretty cold today. So oil, temperature's cold, everything's fucking cold. Um, but we'll get this thing cranked up, fired up. I'm gonna check for leaks and make sure once it does fire up and I'll get back with you guys. And let's see what that says right here for oil pressure once this thing fires up. All right, cold start. We're at 64 PSI oil pressure. Well, I think I can definitively conclude that this car just does not like anything over like 25 PSI of oil pressure at idle. Uh, revving it, boom, instant oil pressure goes up to like 70. Um, but for how fast that the engine spins at 1000 RPM, it cannot produce enough pressure from the pump, um, even a brand new pump, uh, to suffice what the eccentric shaft modification is. Now, is it a bad thing to run at 25, 20 PSI of oil pressure at idle? Um, under no load, I don't see any issue. Obviously taking apart basically half the engine and it's been running like this for 2,000 miles. Um, no damage, no issues, car runs flawlessly. Um, as well as when we rev it, now the oil pressure stays consistent all the way through the RPM range. Um, as we're revving it, uh, it's going up and it's staying consistent. So the oil system is doing what it needs to do and it stays cool enough. Everything's working. So am I concerned anymore on the oil pressure? Not one bit. Uh, we're gonna basically put this thing back together, load it up on uh, the dyno and we'll see what it makes and I think that I'm gonna be very happy with the results. So all in all, a lot of learning, a lot of um, uh, work that went into verifying and now I can understand better what this system wants and what the limitations of the oil system may or may not be. So uh, truth in the end, everything's good to go. Put this thing out, uh, make some power, and verify that we're good on the dyno and we'll see what happens then. I do really appreciate you guys for watching. Um, hopefully this video gave a little insight, just a little bit more on oil pressure for rotary, good, bad, the ugly. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, comment your opinions. Um, love to hear them. Love to be able to at least shed some light on my experiences and hear from you guys what you guys feel like uh, and think. So bring it on.